not quite one fourth and never just half, but the entirety of one primate, whole. It is the part of a story, an idea that means more to you than me. Hello and welcome to Full Gorilla Life. We are Jeremy Keen, Larry Medina, and Corey Hewlings. Each week, we will break down an important life concept or talk with an inspiring person so that you can live your full gorilla life. Hello, and welcome back to Full Gorilla Life. We are, tonight, we have a, a nice guest tonight, Stephanie LeBlanc. She's a lawyer and founder of Vero Pride. We'd like to welcome you to the studio. Oh, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming in. And before we go too far into depth, we'd like to do a quick gorilla gauntlet and learn a quick little synopsis of you here. Yeah, so l- let's get started on that. So we're going to ask you some rapid fire questions. Feel free to... Very intense stuff. Very intense. <laughs> super intense. Um, okay. So, all right, I'm, I'm joking. All right, so uh, first question is married or single? Married. Any children? No. City you live in? Vero Beach. iPhone or Android? iPhone. Always? No. No? no. D- really? No, I had... Forth? Did you well, migrate over? Oh, this migrated this is... over to iPhone. Why? Yeah, because my works. parents ran the plan. That's the phone they <laughs> gave me. <laughs> ah, at the there time. you go. <laughs> that works. Yeah. Okay. But c- could you switch back to Android now? Mm, probably not. I feel like Apple wraps it, you in once you, especially after you've had iTunes account for like fifteen years, and you and, have and all your you, music on. And there, if you have like, a MacBook, it's over. Exactly, because yeah. like you, you have everything synced right now. It's like iPhone, then iPad. You could take a picture. It's going to wind up on either. So it's it's That's right true. now very yeah. accommodating. Yeah. yeah. And then and you have AirDrop. It's over. And right. But I don't even <laughs> feel like it's just the ease and convenience for me. I feel like when I get an Android phone in my hand, I feel like a three-year-old. I'm like, how do you use this thing? Like, it's because you are a three-year-old. Um, <laughs> so favorite <laughs> so movie yeah, or book? It always That's why I was so very intrigued that somebody could switch back and forth. so rapid All fire. Right, so <laughs> so <laughs> favorite favorite uh, movie or book? Mm, definitely book. It's going to be East of Eden. By uh, Steinbeck. What is that? It's um oh gosh, it's basically full bo- full blown life in one book. Nice. Okay. Yeah, the okay. story takes cool. you through a couple different generations um, out in the Salinas Valley in California, and it's very, it's that interplay between what's right and what's wrong, and okay. why we do it. <laughs> okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Um, favorite genre of music. Ooh, I don't have one. Um, oh. Do you like okay. all music, or I, are you just not a big music fan? Yeah, I, I like all music. I mean, I love, what, I love what? Motown. Maybe that. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. All right. I can appreciate that. I yeah, love I like too. the soul of it. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I can definitely appreciate that. Um, reservation or just walk in? Uh, gosh, uh, most of the places I go to just walk in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to hear that. that. <laughs> um, favorite type of food. Where to start? Um, I like to hear that. I well. love really good, um, <laughs> like barbecue, like. Oh, oh yeah, you just opened listen, up Pandora's oh, box, like, Stephanie. Hold, hold I on, listen. I have three other questions, questions, but we may not answer? get to them. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of barbecue? What's Ooh, what oh, you, you're, you're what getting you tested. Mean? Just so you know, you're getting are, tested listen, right now are you, of are your you definition a, of real barbecue. Are you a big barbecue fan? Like, are you like because? There's like North Carolina sunnies. barbecue, and then there's pulled sunnies. pork, then there's like sunnies, or there's like <laughs> Texas beef brisket barbecue, beef ribs. And then like, there's the McRib. I mean, I wouldn't say no to any of them. So I... Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm, you guys are I'm undecided have, have, right now. Have you tried Cridermans? No. Do you Something. go to Melbourne? Not that often, no. Okay. We, we if, if you go to Melbourne, <laughs> all right, and, and this is for, for everybody. And you're in the mood for barbecue. And you're in the mood for barbecue. And downtown you go to old Melbourne. downtown Melbourne. There's a place called Cridermans. The downside is that they're closed on Sundays, but they're open on Saturdays, but they only open from 12 until they, clo- until so they, they sell out. Sell out. So Delicious. it's that good. Okay. They sell out. Yeah. It's, it's just ha- we once flew to Austin, Texas to eat mm-hmm. barbecue. Just for barbecue. That was our sole reason for so flying there. I just, that's that's the kind of barbecue guys we are. Like, I understand so it. We're, there you go. We're a little too passionate so you guys know, I want to go ahead and point out that we're still in rapid fire. <laughs> Don't, don't ruin this, Jeremy. Yeah. I know, but I have to Jeremy, get them back on point off barbecue because I'm telling you, Stephanie, it's tough. Eventually, it's, it's you'll tough learn them. how to create content. Yeah, and then you'll I get know. on here with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but but honestly, as far as far as like the barbecue uh, around here, Craterman's is is probably the best one around yeah. here right. for brisket. Okay, and, and actually pork ribs. 
All right. Should I move forward? Is that yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, favorite, uh, I'm sorry. What do you drive? Uh, it's a Lexus sedan. Okay. Mm-hmm. Last but not least, beer, whiskey, or wine? wine. Or none? Wine. 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 Kind? White, yeah. red. White or red. Um, yeah, matter. I've never been a beer drinker. I don't know why. Okay. I've a, never You know what? That's what we're missing it. in our fridge. Yeah, we don't have wine. What? Only when Nikki was there. What's uh, a good wine have, to have in there? Like a, that could fit in there. We do have Pinot fridge. because I keep Pinot on stock. For little box wine. Nikki, <laughs> shout out. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't, uh, you know, a favorite white that's going around now is Kim Crawford. Okay. Yeah, it's like 13 to 15 bucks a bottle, depending on where you get it. It's not bad. It's not bad. And like m- across the board, most people will go to it. Cool. Yeah. Kim Crawford. Kim Crawford, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah. All right, th- that's all the rapid fire questions. We finally <laughs> got to it. We are six minutes in, <laughs> but um, but yeah, th- those are the rapid fire questions. So yeah, if you don't mind, Stephanie, maybe giving us a little background, right? So um, we were talking very briefly before we actually started recording, and you mentioned you moved to Vero Beach. So could we talk about what got you to Vero Beach? Yeah, honestly, worked it. Um, I studied law at the University of Miami. And right out of graduation, it was bar exam, bar exam, study, like prep, Mm -hmm. uber nerd cave. And then (laughs) along that way, you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do when I'm done with this exam? Okay. How many times did it take you? Just one? Oh, just one. Look at you. Congrats. (laughs) So what's an uber nerd cave? Yeah. Uber nerd cave is like... (laughs) 10 different books open at once with your laptop going for an online lecture and notes. It, it's just like mass chaos of paper around you. Organized chaos. Um, or, yeah, f- organized I, I, paper chaos. I'm waiting for the matrix type when they just uh, insert in something in the back of my head and then I download Then it. you can be a lawyer. Yeah. yeah. Then um, I can do whatever I want. I, Until I, then. I think podcast. that's, <laughs> I think the Uber nerd cave is the definition of hell to me. Yeah, <laughs> like that's it, that sounds awful. Tough that sounds. I think awful. it depends because if it's something you're passionate about or all in, I think you could find yourself in some, maybe not to ten books, maybe a book and some, maybe some YouTube video content and yeah. you know, master classes. If I you can will. watch. So I, hey, you I can watch YouTube and the TV at the same time. See, you're on your way to Uber <laughs> yeah. Cave. So, so, so what made you be interested in law? Um, honestly, I so I did undergrad in accounting, which is I know thrilling and super exciting. <laughs> right. And so after right, I was like, all right, I I don't really want to be an accountant. I don't want to just focus on numbers. Like, let me go to law school. And because I had the background in tax with accounting, I was like, all right, let me go be a tax attorney. At the end of the day, even if I'm miserable, it's a great paycheck. So let's oh, just yeah. let's yeah. do it. Let's yeah. stick to it. Uh, uh, and nothing wrong with that. Never thought FBI. Because most people that go into FBI sure. either major in accounting or law. <laughs> <laughs> so you have both kind of in the pocket. If you ever want to you know, change yeah. careers, you always go in the FBI. Yeah. I could. Maybe. Just throwing that out there for you. <laughs> so currently you are an estate attorney? Yeah, we do uh, mostly estate work. So planning, drafting, helping people put uh, their intentions essentially on paper so that they have peace of mind. And we also do the flip side of that. And it's called mostly probate. That's what people know it by sometimes, or um, administrative estate work. Okay, so so, we, so it's like like let's pretend I had money, right? Or or not. <laughs> so so right. So Stuff. so if, if if I was going to go ahead and like like creating a will, right? Mm-hmm. Essentially, is that is that what that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we help people create wills uh, and or trusts depending on their situation. Uh, we also do like lifetime planning documents, which is your powers of attorney, your healthcare surrogates, living wills, that sort of thing, so that you've got every phase covered for. Now, do you, you feel that people, um, this is something that more people should think about? Because I feel like that's something that people think about but never act on. Oh, they, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, and it's such a, everybody should have something in place, whether you're literally 18 to 90. You, you don't need to have a lot of zeros behind your estate value in order to have a plan in place. You know, so um, my mom owned a house and she passed away and we were going through the the will and the attorney that we went through, he's like, don't worry about the house because you're her, her sons and so you're just going to get the house. Yeah. It, was that bad advice? I, Be honest. No, it wasn't bad advice, but he, he was alluding to um, Homestead. Okay. And there's certain restrictions and benefits 
along with that, um, so without without yeah, completely yeah, we, yeah. boring you, there's, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot more to it, but it's not necessarily bad advice. Gotcha. He's okay. just alluding to other areas of the law. Okay. No. And me and Larry have discussed this for other aspects of business and real estate and stuff. Can you give like the elevator sales pitch of why go to an actual attorney instead of like the online, like we'll write your will up for you. I feel like I can and help I, you out, but yeah, <laughs> sure. We'll so hear from the actual attorney. Calm down, Larry. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's so <laughs> much like you don't want to web MD yourself on something and then watch it be an extreme bacterial infection. You want to go to the doctor and make sure, cause you don't want to mess around with your actual being your person. Well, in much the same way, you don't want to download a will off legal Zoom because it it could really screw up property distribution and so forth. Yeah, so. I, I can tell you some bad experience that I had. So I went I, I went ahead and I, I did a paralegal. Um, I went through a process and um, I used a paralegal, not an attorney. And it, basically, I was I was given some bad advice, right? And I took the bad advice, so it's on me. But, but I took the bad advice and it came back and bit me pretty bad. And after that, I'm like, I'm not doing anything. Well, what you don't to, know that you don't know though. So you didn't know it was bad advice at the time. Uh, agree. So right. my advice to the folks that are listening to this is I am on board with what you just said, right? Because I would say that you should always go with an attorney personally because you get what you pay for. Yeah. And a lot of times, and I, I don't know your rates and stuff like that, but a lot of times I've found when I've started looking this stuff up, it's not so astronomical that you shouldn't go do it. It's kind of just like one of those like, yeah, okay, I, I need to go do it. It's not like you're going to save so much money by doing trying to do it for $79 online. At, at the end of the day, what, what, what ended up happening was I, I got told, you know how people say you can't afford attorney? Yeah. They said you can't afford to not have an attorney. <laughs> And yeah, at that point in time, I was like, more sometimes yeah. to fix okay. something. Yes, that's what, uh, uh, and yeah. I know Larry's story more personally, but that's mm-hmm. exactly what happened to him. Yeah. When he had to go finally get an attorney, it ended up costing him more than if he would have just gotten an attorney to start with. Right. Right. Yeah. So again, you get what you pay for. It kind of goes back to my couch theory, uh, right? Where you get what, oh. you, what you, <laughs> you, you, there's a Medina law, law of the Medina, which is his last name. And basically you buy something because you, you kind of settle for it, knowing there's something, there's one that you liked a lot more. But it was kind of pricey and they end up buying this one and then it just ended up happening they end up getting rid of that one and buying the one they wanted so in the long run it cost they should have bought the one they wanted <laughs> right and they would have been happy in the beginning the whole time and save some money now do it right from the beginning so that's yeah. the law of the i've otherwise. done that with stuff too yeah, yeah. you're yeah. just like so why didn't i so business brought you the your practice that you work for brought you to vero beach yeah so uh, you know sitting there in my nerd cave studying for the florida bar i was also jobs lurking job looking, job searching. So I wound up applying for a position up here in Vero and drove up, interviewed a couple of times, was offered a spot and I took it. So that's what brought me up. That's awesome. How now, long have you been working there? Um, I'm no longer at that first firm that okay. I was working for, but I've been working here in town for four years now. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah. And, and obviously we got recommended to you by Robin Wendy. So I'm assuming you go to their gym. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I work out there. Um, it's a great gym. <laughs> Always a good workout. Yeah. Yeah. So do you get now, now that they are doing real strength and conditioning, um, and not so much the CrossFit side, like back then when we used to work out, like we would always geek out like on the CrossFit game side, like we would always be like, oh, who's going to win? Mm-hmm. Like, do you are geek you out a, a little bit on that? Uh, no. No. Man, that's no. Okay. no. Hey, listen, that's just like you're normal. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just I, I just go to maintain and not yeah, okay. not get too chubby. So yeah. that's it. I, I <laughs> so do you, I no longer geek out and I got chubby. <laughs> yeah. So I don't so no longer geek out or work out. <laughs> I got chubby, right? Yeah. <laughs> so how do you like Vero? Uh you know it grows on you. Now traffic upsets me when I go down south oh, to like right? visit right? family and friends. It's so awful. it it kind of spoils you in that respect. Am I right? Yeah. 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 yeah it. it Again, first, it, it, it does hit you like there is a big difference in culture. So it takes some getting used to. But I've learned that like this is a pretty neat town to to make things happen. So just like just like Vero Pride, right? Mm-hmm. 
no pride event whatsoever no nothing as much as a gay bar in town and i was able to with a couple other ladies in town put forth the first event and it was a hit like huge success we sold out and have always continued to sell out every summer so let's talk about that so, for a minute yeah so so how does that work out like like so so with the so so yeah so um yeah start from the beginning for that for you for with bureau pride yeah, yeah. sure so i along with uh shelly adele and katie gasly we got together and said gosh you know vero really needs like movement vero needs a little bit more acknowledgement and recognition <laughs> of a more progressive position okay if you, mm-hmm. if you yeah, would sure um, and so we saw that certain things were lacking and we first started out as first amendment activists, amendment one activists, sorry. And what is that? the whole goal, that was our nonprofit name. Okay. Um, now we're doing business as strictly Vero pride to okay. focus on pride. Is the pride still a 501 3C or we are actually, because we were first set up to do more like social welfare, we set up as a 501 C4. Okay. What's, What's the, the difference? difference? Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're kind of done. Bas- besides, pur- besides purpose, uh, the biggest difference is that when people do donate towards us, they can't get a deduction for it. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it, it, social welfare, it can have some political activism. Ah, so there's it. where you can't get a deduction. Yeah. So Makes sense. Yeah. When so we first set it up, we wanted to represent more... Um, unification because it was also just around after the election um and we were sick of like the binariness of it sure so we wanted to like bring everybody together regardless of what the voter card said to have a conversation and to do good in the community so we threw a couple different events um but our biggest one most successful one was vero pride so we decided to focus on that okay so is your mission still in bureau to kind of separate that binary side yeah. of it oh um, definitely yeah because i it is so polarizing and in this room it, we are very polar opposites um us speaking of us, us three as far as political beliefs and religious beliefs and i mean we're all over the spectrum but i don't see any reason why i can't sit down with somebody and have a very civil or yeah, meaningful conversation what, right. from what, the what's, other side yeah. what's Agreed. odd is is that as Corey's stating that, right, um, very polar opposites in every imaginable way that you can think of. But best However, friends still. That's what I was going to say, is that, is that I would still do anything for these guys, right, personally. Like, I, I would, if if they're like, hey, we need, I need X, I'll give you my shirt. Here you go. Right. You know, um, just don't ask me to do anything manly. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> Again, yeah, not but only polar j- opposites, jokingly, but right, but, but honestly, um, yeah, that, that that's awesome that you're doing that, you know, so I, I you know, round of applause for you, yeah. but that, that, that's, that's pretty awesome. So how did you get that organized? Uh, like, how'd you get the word out? About pride? Yeah. Oh just, gosh. Or just, yeah. Where First, did you, where did you start from? You had some friends and you were like, all right, let's what do What are we going to do? Yeah. What, what, was it just organic or did you pay or? Mm. No, it was it was all organically. I mean, the most we paid for at the time based on our budget was maybe like a few Facebook ads. Uh, so it was mainly we don't even have that word budget. of mouth <laughs> through. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps asking us. We yeah. keep saying no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I mean, it's really Sorry. hard, right? Like, it's yeah. really hard trying yeah. to like put money together. It is. Um, Create a following. <laughs> Yeah, free to following, <laughs> especially for something that's, you know, LGBTQ sure. plus in, in a more conservative mm-hmm. town. But, it you know, it was so weird because, like, we kept hearing, oh, gosh, like, how conservative Vera was, blah, 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 blah. But it's true, but I've got to tell you, like, the support for what we've been able to do has been surprising, given that. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, so, well, so I, that, that, that's part of it too, right? To me, like, there's a big misconception, regardless of who you are or what you are. And this is just my take, so it could be my ignorance or not. But my my personal take is that if I sit down and I talk to Corey and or Jeremy and they're polar opposites, our values are still very much aligned. At the end of the day, it might just be a couple things that are different, 
but everything else is still pretty much the same. Like, like, I, you know, still be nice to each other, right? Still love one another. Like the things that matter are still aligned, you know? So, so yeah. So to your point of the, you know, whether, it, um, the surprise of, wow, I'm getting a ton of support. Like at the end of the day, like, like even though people may think differently and it's very polarizing, like I do feel that, and that, I, that, that you're finding, <clears throat> you know, that, which is awesome. Do you find it to be less polarizing now than what it once was? As um, far as like political, political beliefs. Or do you feel it's worse? I, that's such a tough question. Um, like just within LGBTQ plus, yeah. you know, I think it's now more, now more inclusive and now more together. Uh-huh. Like where there's still a bit of a divide, it's something that you really can't argue because then you get into, you get into religion and mm. that, you know, you're never really going to find common ground there because everybody's religion is their own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when we do find pushback in terms of any donations for pride or, or whatnot, you know, any back, I guess we had one organization that we went to and said, Hey, can we put like a pride poster up to let everybody know that we're doing this tickets are on sale. Um, manager was like, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Well, the next second we knew like they were throwing the poster out in the garbage. Mm-hmm. Oh. So it's like for that, just tell us you're not going to put it up. Agreed. Versus just waste the, yeah, be upfront about yeah, it. Yeah, waste the product. We'll find somewhere else to put it. Yeah, because yeah, um, that costs money, right? Right, <laughs> right. When yeah. every penny counts, yeah. you're like, gosh, like that could that, have been another Facebook That's just ad. a poster to <laughs> you, yeah. but but it's more than that to me. Right. Yeah, 100 percent agree. Right. So, it, I mean, we have people sponsor us from uh, f- from everywhere in Vero, from the islands, from South Vero to North Vero to Mid Vero. So. Again, it it's conservatives and liberals coming together for really a human rights cause. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they've been they've been supportive for the past three years. We've been doing. And it, I mean, that's, that's awesome. kind of the proof is in the pudding. There, you know, like you said, if they're supporting it, especially financially, because I I found in life, you know, people support you, and then there's people that support you financially, and those and are two different types of people. And, and what, what's cool about well, uh, you know, what, what what's interesting to me is that. You're still getting the financing, even though it's not a deduction. And that's the part that that means a lot to at least my take, right? Is that if I'm going to give away money and I can't deduct it, like that means that there's I really lo- cared even, yeah. about this right. cause, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't. The best way to experience it is actually by coming to Pride. And we've got people people there that I'm telling you the crowd is pretty much split between LGBTQ plus and straight allies. Like everybody kind of comes out to celebrate and have a great time. Um, we have donors that I don't even need to send a letter to a request to. So like, you know, we mentioned Rob and Wendy earlier, Vero strength and conditioning. I don't even need to ask them. They're without hesitation, always there to donate. Yeah, they're awesome people. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, you know, it helps because the more the, that people see the support, the more bigger corporations, bigger perhaps banks or entities would come forth and also put their name behind it, make our jobs a little yeah. easier every year. How many, um, like, I know, you, how long have you actually, how long, how many, how many events have we events had? Events have you had? Three. Three. And how long, how long ago back was your first one? We started... Um, is it a yearly event? 17. Yeah. Okay. So we throw Pride. It's usually just a weekend thing. We do like a Saturday night dance party, then a Sunday fun day at the beach. And we do it once a year during International Gay Pride Month of June. June. Yeah. So every June we do something. Cool. That's yeah. awesome. So what kind of music do we play here? Uh, we actually have had really good music lately. He... He's able to magically read the crowd, so it's okay. a bit of everything. So it's a certain DJ in town. Uh, he we bring him in. Um, he's based in Orlando. Okay. Yeah, and he actually he doesn't. He thinks it's cheesy that I credit him this, but he <laughs> used to work at Pulse. Yeah, okay. so he's he's pretty good. What's Pulse? That's Pulse the, nightclub. The nightclub that had in the Orlando. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's it's one of the notable um, clubs there. Okay. Yeah, I. 
Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, I didn't know. It's Your memory is horrible. Yes. <laughs> I can attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> but I can finish your sentence. <laughs> have you? Do you? Have you has had any like times where you felt like you broke through some barriers with certain people that might have had more of a? Have you had those moments that are kind of like really cool, where you might even have a really close friend that in the beginning pushed against some of the beliefs and then now has opened up and like, wow, we can, we're really good friends now. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, straight and gay alike, honestly, like we've, we've had people who uh, maybe hadn't come out who have now felt comfortable enough to do so. Um, cause when like uh, when Vero pride happens, people that do come out and identify feel like their city is behind them. Mm-hmm. So they're like, Oh, okay, great. Like there is this in town people don't need to hide it's it's okay to be me so just as much of of the straight allies that come out and go oh okay re- like great this isn't like a, a weird or uncomfortable event they now are like great we can't wait for it next year that's good how, how was empowering. it how was it uh telling your your parents um I, when did you, you tell them before miami before law school yes uh, no, I mean, I, I was, I'm kind of awkward to begin with. Okay. So I really didn't start dating until college. Um, okay. and even then I never really felt comfortable introducing my parents to anybody. So it wasn't until, it wasn't until law school that, um, it, that you told them. Yeah. And it, it, it was more like oh, hey, this is who I'm dating. It was never this formal, you know, exclamation of, hey, I'm gay. It was like, hey, this is who okay. I'm seeing. Yeah, I I don't know. It's my own personal thing that, like, I don't I feel saying. like coming you just out skipped it. You're like, should be something. It should just be, hey, this it, is who I am. Yeah. So was there any pushback from your parents then? Not, not from a position of, like, this is morally being objected to sure. but more oof we don't like her <laughs> oh, so, okay. yeah they didn't yeah but that's <laughs> any right. that's any parent right <laughs> so right. it was more of like you yeah. 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 like I, I, just no. not this person <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. that's so fair you, you, so can you, pre- yeah. you, you're no longer with her no okay no. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough all right so you got married where did you get married obviously not in in the state or yes? yes. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we Jesus. just got married. Um, listen, hey, I don't know. I'm educating myself here. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, so gay marriage actually came down as uh, legalized from the Supreme Court a few years ago now. Okay. So it's now the law of every state, every part of the land. And we just did a quiet little thing on the beach here in December of last year. Okay. That's okay. awesome. Yeah. So you didn't spend like $25,000? No. That's even, that's even awesomer. Yes, <laughs> good for you on yeah. that one. Yeah, great. no yeah. way. Used it for a down payment on a house. No way. <laughs> That's the smartest That's thing smart. to do. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. That's what they teach you in college, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> he did not do that. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. The no. bank still owns my house. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. So, so all right. So, you started uh, Viral, Viral Pride here. And uh, going on, you said three years? Yeah, we've now done it three years in a row. Three years in a row. Okay. And w- how big other, is the group now? Yeah, two other people you started with? Yeah, two other board members. And it's just us three. On the um, board still? Yeah, on Are the board Are they out there still. doing podcasts? Or are you the only one hustling? Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, now, right now, it's quiet just because we've come off pride. Hey, listen, but we'll I'm not going to say that you're doing more than them, but... You're kind of do more than them, okay? Do you guys have any? I don't want to. Um, I don't want to give you a big head or anything, or but <laughs> just, we're, just we're, put we're, that. I'll, yeah, put that in your notebook. I'll we're, make okay. them listen to this. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> we're we're kind of big time. <laughs> I'm, sh- I'm shaking my head now. Do you guys have any aspirations to kind of t- make it um, bigger, grander, like branch out other locations, maybe in other nearby cities or or counties? I don't think it would be Bureau Pride. I hey, everything starts somewhere and can grow. Um. You know, if we can somehow motivate and encourage that, sure. What what we would like to do is ultimately have a resor- kind of like a resource programming available, especially okay. for younger adults, for teenagers, um, to help them with their emotions, with their feelings. 
Because that's that's something that, you know, I'm sensitive to. I know what it's like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, LGBTQ teens are especially at a higher risk of suicide, comparatively speaking. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we would like to be able to do is, is maybe just have a safe space where they can come and simply do their homework, work on projects, play games, whatnot, and have adults that they could look up to and and feel somewhat protected by. I think that's important. Yeah, no, I think that is really important. And and so so to that point, right? Um, so Vero Pride is it, is it more of just really just getting a community together and being able to to host. Um, you know, like, like, like a spot somewhere in town to really be able to just really meet one another and get the support group. Is that, is that like the, the purpose? Like I, just, just for my own knowledge, like how, how does, what, what, what is the, the purpose? For yeah, Pride? that, that is definitely going to be our core is providing community, providing a safe space for, for those who need it. Um, we just, you know, lack the resources right now to have actual brick and mortar, but we are in development with spaces to maybe, you know, rent or just have those spaces donated from time to time mm-hmm. to be able to do that. Now, you, you mentioned that, that you know what it's like. Like, so can you talk about maybe how how that affected you as, as a child or maybe even through college? Yeah, I mean, you... So much back then, and I mean, I'm not that old, you know, coming on age 30, still you grew up and it was all about a heteronormative lifestyle. So growing up, like you see boy, girl, boy, girl, and in your mind, then you're like, okay, like this is what I'm supposed to do. So growing up, being a teenager is confusing to begin with. And it's, it's not like if you're gay, you can't acknowledge some, you know, some attraction to the opposite gender. Like there are handsome men all around and I'll admit that like, oh, he's quite handsome. Oh, thank you. Right? <laughs> like <laughs> it, it doesn't mean though that there's a uh, romantic desire. Okay. I got you. And that's, and that's something that's pretty hard to distinguish when you are younger. That's a good point. Cause like I, I have a friend who's gay and he he'll come up and tell him be like that girl's hot and I'm like so like I, I I I'm always like yeah but I mean we do that too I mean last night we know that Doctor Story was a good looking dude that's true like we know okay. he he outshines yeah. us in the photo like he has yeah. to hunch down like he's some like <laughs> yeah to us <laughs> yeah basketball mere mortals <laughs> yeah mere mortals. mortals you know yeah. we're like yeah. Oh, okay yeah but that's he just point. upped our game Be- because <laughs> because like you know I'm I'm very not educated, ignorant in that aspect, right? Um, however, you know, we're great friends. Like, I'll call him just a BS all the time. And, uh, and you know, g- great guy. But, but yeah, like, it's just something that I just never put together. You know, I'll mess with him about it all the time. But, but yeah, you know, it's something that people don't realize. Like, I, I never would have realized it unless if I, you know, until I met him. So, but, yeah. So you guys have a website or Facebook? Um, where can they find you at? Uh, yeah, both. Uh, easiest is probably to go to veropride.com. Okay. And from there, you can get to social media. Okay. Your Instagram and Facebook's all on there? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right, we got one final question. If based on your life experiences, what is one thing that you can impart on our listeners that you feel like they can implement in their lives? Um, gosh, never compromise who you are. For the satisfaction of others. Oh, that's great. That's Boom. that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much, Stephanie. Oh, yeah, definitely. No, thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. Sure. As always, guys, if you got any questions, comments, or concerns, you can get us at life at gmail.com. Make sure you're sharing all that social media stuff. <laughs> and if you want to find out what's going on in social media, you can find us on Instagram and uh, Facebook at Full Gorilla Life and on Twitter at gorilla full like beautiful but with a gorilla and please do not forget to go to our website for the latest updates at fullgorilla.life and please hit subscribe on your podcast app of choice later